Hey, beautiful people of the Most High God. So the Most High God wants me to teach you to be clean, sanctified, and holy, and that He's the one who makes you clean, and He's the one who sanctifies you, and you should use these scriptures in your prayers, like 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, and also Ezekiel, well, we'll get there, Ezekiel 20, I'm 36 and 25. So um, let's get into it. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23, And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our, of Emmanuel Christ. So God wants you to use this scripture and say, Father, God of peace, sanctify me wholly. I pray you to sanctify my spirit, soul, body, and let it be preserved blameless unto the coming of Christ. So God wants you to know it's him who does the sanctifying of your spirit and your soul. And that um, he sprinkles water on you, but also you must wash with water. And yes, you plead for the blood of Christ. It's the water and the blood that cleans you, not just the blood of Christ. You need to actually wash yourself physically with water. All right. So yes, God sanctifies you spiritually with sprinkling water on you we're going to get there but you also yourself need to wash as many times as you can not just um baptism because you sin all the time and it's a legal right of satan when you're not sanctified and clean you can wash all the time and say father wash me in pure water you can use hebrews 10 and 22 the pure water all right so that's what he wants you to know washing is all the time now Leviticus and that he wants you to be holy, sanctified and clean. That's how you can come in his presence and he'll deliver you. Now Leviticus 19 and 2, speak unto the all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, you shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Now 1 Peter 1 and 16, because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. I'm just referencing again because some people don't reuse the Old Testament, but it's also in the New Testament. God is holy, so therefore be holy. Romans 7 and 12, wherefore the law is holy and the commandment holy and just and good. So God's law is holy and his commandments holy and it's just and it's good. Now Leviticus 20 and 26 and you shall be holy unto me for i the lord am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine holy means to be set apart so what does god tell you here he severed you from other people that you should be his now leviticus 11 and 44 for i am the lord your god you shall therefore sanctify yourselves and ye shall be holy for i am holy neither shall you defile yourselves with any manner of creeping thing that creeps upon the earth and we're going to go into when you wash your feet you're made clean and why christ washed the feet of his apostles his disciples right now leviticus 11 and 45 for for i am the lord that brings you up out of the land of egypt to be your god you shall therefore be holy for i am holy so we're going to talk about why Christ washed the feet of his disciples and said why we should wash one another's feet. Because it all goes back to Exodus, but we'll get there. But 1 Peter 1 and 15, but as he which called you is holy, so, so be holy, so ye be holy in all manner of conversation. So your conversation needs to be holy. I told you people in a video that God... Even your conversation should be in truth, right? That's holy conversation. Isaiah 1 and 16, God tells you, wash you, make you clean. That's you bathing, washing yourself with pure water, blessing the water and asking God, Father, turn this into pure water and get it in your shower. Saying all the water that comes out of this faucet, Father, make it Hebrews 10 and 22, pure water to make me clean. Wash you make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes cease to do evil so when will god sanctify you when you do this you wash you make yourself clean by what putting away the evil of your doings before your before his eyes cease to do evil and you have to wash you have to bathe 
Now, and, and this as well, Genesis 35 and 2. Then Jacob said unto his household and to all that were with him, put away the strange gods that are among you and be clean. So if you're calling on strange god idols, you're doing witchcraft and those type of things, you you need to put away those things from before, before you and be clean and change your garments. Um, this goes a lot with, you know, a lot of garments people shouldn't be wearing. Now, Ezekiel 36 and 25, this is God who does the cleaning for you. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. So God wants you to use Ezekiel 36 and 25 to be clean and Ezekiel 36 and 26 to and Ezekiel 36 and 29. So let's read it. And to ask God to give you a new heart and a new spirit. Ezekiel 36 and 26. A new heart also will I give you and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Father, renew give me a new heart, a new spirit, and take out my stony heart and put one of flesh. You, and ask him to sprinkle you clean. Because he's the one who cleans you from all your filthiness and from all your vitals, and he's the one who cleanses you, and he will give you a new heart and a new spirit. It's God who does this for you. When you repent before him and you wash yourself and you remove idols and strange things from you. Ezekiel 36 and 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues. And you shall keep my judgments and do them. And you shall dwell in the land that I give to your fathers. And you shall be my people and I will be your God. When will God do these things for you? When you're clean before him? When you're holy before him? When you're sanctified? I will also save you from all your uncleanliness, your uncleannesses, and I will call for the corn and will increase it and lay no famine upon you. So it's God who cleans you from all your unclean, uncleansiness, uncleanliness. <laughs> and 1 Peter 1, and 22, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth. How are you purifying yourself when you're following God's commandments, when you're obeying his truth? Through the spirit unto unfringed love of the brethren, seeing that you love one another with a pure heart, fervently. So that's a requirement as well. When God sees you loving out of a pure heart, because those who live in God, live in love, live in God. They ab who abide in God's love, they ab God abides in them. All right. Now Hebrews 10 and 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. So what is this? You need to wash your body. Wash, he tells you. Wash and make you clean wash you make you clean and put away the evils of your doings from before my eyes and cease to do evil but who's the one who sprinkles you god then will i sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean it's god who does this when you turn away yourself from doing evil and you show love and from a pure heart like right here have seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfringed love of the brethren, seeing you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Hebrews 10 and 22, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Now, you can pray to God. Psalms 51 and 2, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity in repentance and cleanse me from my sin that means you're staying away from your sin you're asking god to forgive you you're turning away from evil washing and being clean isaiah um, psalms 51 and 7 purge me with hyssop and i shall be clean wash me and i shall be whiter than so who is david asking to purge him and make him clean god because god is the one who does the cleaning psalms 26 and 6 
I will wash my hands in innocency. So will I come past thy altar, O Lord. So how can you get to God's altar when your hands are innocent, when you're washed and you're made clean? Leviticus 20 and 26. And you shall be holy unto me, for I, the Lord, am holy and have severed you from other people that you should be mine. 